All right. So um, as I've said before, if I'm talking and you've got a question, you don't want to forget it, please park it in the chat. We'll call that the parking lot. Um, if you can have your screen on, that's great. I would love to see your faces. If not, that's no problem either. Um, and let's keep everything in the chat relevant to whatever we're dealing with in class. Um, all right. So we are preparing for essay two. Uh, it makes me think about essay one. You'll be getting your grades back for that uh, within the next few days. So be on the lookout. Remember that if you haven't turned in essay one yet, which I don't really think is a problem with this class, um, you are still allowed to turn in late. Okay, uh, so uh, take that time. Um, make sure you get it in though, because as you can see, we're already preparing for the next thing. If you get a grade that you don't like, let's set up a meeting and a contract and we'll talk about how to revise it. Okay, um, all right, so now let's move on to essay two. Have you all, uh, Adrian, Jenny, and Stella, have you been able to see the uh, word cloud uh, generator that's on the homepage? Jenny, you were able to see it, good. Yeah, and who? Someone put a thumbs up and I can't even see who it is. Oh, Stella, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong spot, looking at the chat. Uh, okay, good. Um, yeah, so some of the answers as I put in the announcement this morning are spot on and others um, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, because I think they're, they can be um, misleading and they think they reflect a misinterpretation. Let's see what we have. Okay, so let's go here to our homepage. As you can see, there's an example of an advertisement. Uh, I think this one's a little bit, this one's at the edge of, of what could be used. Um, but uh, nonetheless, Old Spice is a company, the product is deodorant. And if we look down here at the bottom, we can see that um, Super Bowl uh, has been submitted twice. That's the largest um, suggestion so far. That isn't exactly a product. Um, because what you need to do is to find um, one product that then has multiple advertisements, multiple companies for it. The Super Bowl is an event, and when that event is mass mediated uh, on TV, then we have a bunch of commercials that are with it. Um, if uh, I, I, if you were to push for this and you really wanted to do it, we'd have to talk uh, and we'd have to look at what are commercials that are promoting the Super Bowl. Okay and they'd have to come from four different companies, all right? So I do wanna make sure that that's clear. The really good examples I think are makeup, deodorant, perfume. Um, this one here for like Burger King and Carl's Jr. Those are specific companies and the, the product that they both share is fast food or like fast food burgers, right? So if you were to do fast food, um, we would wanna have a consistent comparison and we can talk more about doing comparisons um, and, and the importance of consistency when structuring comparative analyses uh, next week. Um, but uh, for now, make sure that whatever you're choosing is a product that manifests in, in four different advertisements, each advertisement coming from a different company. Uh, did anyone have any questions about whether their product can be used or um, whether it's appropriate yeah, for this essay. No, okay. All right, so um, do you guys have any questions about the upcoming essay? Nothing at the moment? Okay, let's see. I'm looking at the chat. Adrian, you're all good? Okay, good. All right, uh, well then maybe while you're thinking, uh, what I would like to do is to share with you this, um, the focus for this week. 
is on a rhetorical element called warrants. And I didn't make a voice thread for it yet. So I'll just take this opportunity where I'm being recorded as a video and I'll kind of make it as if it is a, a voice thread, although they're not as interactive um, as voice threads are. Um, okay, so we have been building our base for an argument for a while now, right? We're in week eight of the semester. The first element of an argument is the claim, okay? Um, claims assert that, uh, you, you, and in a claim, you're trying to assert something. You're trying to prove that something uh, is happening, has happened, or will happen in the future. Um, and there's different kinds of claims, okay? The kind of claim that I just defined is a claim of fact, and that's the kind that we need to have in this paper here, okay? Okay, claim of uh, fact is different from claims of value and claims of policy. Claims of value are pretty much opinions, right? This is a good thing, this is a bad thing. They express, uh, they, uh, express approval or disapproval. And claims of policy say that a certain action needs to be taken. And you're not making a judgment about something being good or bad in this paper, and you're not saying that some action needs to be taken. What you're trying to expose are the beliefs about gender or sexuality that are present in the visual rhetoric of these advertisements, okay? So our claim is very important. The next major element of argument is support, right? This is where you back up the claim. Um, you back it up with two kinds of support. Reason, which is very important. It's like our because statement. Well, how do you know that this is true? How do you know that this is happening? Well, because, you know, blah, 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 right? The reason is then supported by evidence, okay? Um, now, I've taught you all a particular way that I would like this to be presented in papers, right? Um, when you're writing a body paragraph, you start with your claim. That's what a topic sentence should be, a debatable, specific, and significant claim. That's followed by your reason, and then your two support sandwiches, right? The support sandwiches are based on evidence, okay? You set up the evidence, where does it come from? Why do we trust the source? Or what do we know about the source? You provide the evidence and then you analyze it. You connect it back to your reason and your claim. You explain how all those things are connected to each other. Now, the warrant is the third element of argument. It's very important because the warrant bridges the support to the claim. It makes sure that those two things are, are clearly connected, that they are relevant, okay? Um, so that's what this little presentation is about the warrant, the third major element of argument. Warrants are basically assumptions. Um, they are general statements of belief. So they're much broader than a claim, uh, although they would look like a claim, right? Um, so a claim would be something specific in this paper about your advertisement, like in your topic sentence. And we'll look at an example uh, before we head out. Uh, a warrant is gonna be much broader than that, okay? This will all make more sense, I think, when we look at the examples uh, that are coming up in this slide. And actually, here's one right now. Okay. So you'll notice that I've labeled these different models of argument. The Toolman model is the one that we use in this class, where we write our body paragraphs, beginning with the claim, and then we move to support, and then we move to um, the warrant. And really the analysis is kind of like the warrants where we start to explore the connections between the support and the claim. Um, the Aristotelian is uh, old school. Um, people still use it. Uh, it's not what I use in this class. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. So let's imagine that we're making a claim that advertising of cigarettes should be legally banned. Okay, well, why, right? Because cigarettes are harmful to our health. Um, what do you guys think? Is this support here an example of reason or evidence? You can just type it into the chat. Reason or evidence. You've got a 50-50 shot here.
Stella, I appreciate your participation. Um, if it were evidence, we would have something, and Adrian, thank you too. Uh, we would have something statistical here. We would have some kind of data uh, linking uh, cigarettes um, and maybe cancer, right? To all of the people who consume cigarettes, who smoke, right? We would look at rates like that. So I'm glad that you guys both tried this because it's very important that we understand evidence is going to be concrete. It's something that we can all look at, right? Like facts or data, okay? What we actually have here is a reason. So you can imagine that we have the word because kind of connecting these two things. Advertising of cigarettes should be legally banned because cigarettes are harmful to our health, okay? So in this case, this supporting example right here is a reason. It's very important that we have our reasons in place because that'll help us better understand the assumptions that we're making. And that's where the warrant comes in, okay? So we'll move down here. The warrant in this case is that advertising of things harmful to our health should be legally banned. Okay, now notice how much broader this is, okay? The key thing that's missing is cigarettes, right? That's because the warrant is this general statement. It's this assumption that applies to many different things that are harmful to our health, okay? So um, let's go through that one more time. If the claim is advertising of cigarettes should be legally banned because cigarettes are harmful to our health, well, then the, the assumption here is that, well, then we should ban anything, uh, the advertising of anything that's harmful to our health, okay? And you can see on the right, the Aristotelian uh, syllogism, that's just the name for the structure where we begin with the major premise, the minor premise, and then we move to the conclusion. It's all of the same elements that we have in the Toulmin model, okay? Um, so we can start with the major premise. If you accept that advertising of things harmful to our health should be legally banned, right? And we know that cigarettes are harmful to our health, then we must conclude that advertising of cigarettes should be legally banned. So now we have all the pieces we need to test the logic of our ideas. We have our claim, which is a conclusion that we draw. We have our support, which is like a minor premise. And we have our warrant, and the warrant is like a major premise, okay? If uh, to return to something I had alluded to before, your claim is like a topic sentence, okay? Or a thesis, okay? Your support, which is reason and evidence, okay? The support, the minor premise, That's reason and evidence, okay, or the quote sandwiches. Okay, in the case of your advertisements, you probably won't always have a quote because sometimes the advertisements are just an image. Of course, if you include the copy, right, that's the language, the writing on the advertisement that could help. But part of your evidence is going to be your objective description of details, okay. Um, and then of course we have the warrant and the warrant within the paper is oftentimes gonna be stated in your analysis, okay? That's where you're explaining, you're looking at the details presented in the evidence and you're connecting them to the beliefs and values that are part of the claim that, that help us explain those relationships, okay? so. Uh, as we'll see later in this uh, PowerPoint slide presentation, you don't always need to state warrants, okay? Um, sometimes you can just trust that your uh, audience is going to share that assumption with you. Uh, this is an important skill to develop and it really relies on you knowing your audience. Um, so we'll spend more time dealing with that later in this semester uh, when we think about the audience and what are some assumptions that we can share and what are some assumptions that we can't. Um, I, I would 
say for right now, think anything that we have read, okay, because it's new, you should probably uh, state what assumptions are in there, okay, um, that would get us to accept some of these things, right? So like something like, you know, gender is, um, uh, that, that gender is cultural, right? Uh, that's probably a good thing, a, a good assumption to remind us of um, in here, right? Uh, it, part of that is because I'm checking to see your understanding of these things, and I don't know what you believed beforehand, okay? So I think it's probably safest to err on the side of stating your warrants. I will let you know if some of the assumptions you're stating are too obvious, okay? Um, if for some reason the issue of, of violence and murder came up, you know, in a, in a paper, right? You don't need to say murder is wrong or is a violation of human rights. That that's obvious. That's an assumption that we can share. Okay, so uh, probably safest to state assumptions related to gender and sexuality because that's the specific content that this course is asking you to interpret now and, and analyze. And I need to know that you understand those things. All right, so I've been talking a lot here. I wanna uh, catch my breath, but I also wanna see if you have any questions about what a warrant is or how it's related to claim and support. Any questions so far? Adrian, you're all good. That's good. Um, let's see if there's anything else I absolutely want to get to in the PowerPoint slide. Stella, you too. Good. Um, there's the example of murder is wrong and, and the relevance of stating something like that. Uh, let's see here. I won't focus on backing your warrant right now. I think you can look at that slide and if you have any specific questions, you can share them with me. Um, there are more examples that I post here. I want to get to the slide where we talk about stating warrants, right? There are various reasons to state your warrants. You can look at them here and maybe why you shouldn't state them. I think the best thing to do, as I said, is to state them that builds your credibility with me, okay, as, uh, as writers, all right? Uh, what I don't want is for you to uh, accidentally leave something out that's important for you to state, right? That would imply, uh, that would indicate some kind of carelessness. Um, but, you know, another, so, uh, another reason why sometimes warrants are left out is there's some kind of intentional omission. Someone has removed the warrant uh, because if they stated the warrant, it might actually weaken their argument, okay? Um, so, I think it's best to just be honest and to state it because what you're relying on is that your audience isn't going to catch it. Okay. And if they do catch it, then that could weaken your credibility, your ethos. Okay. So we don't want that. Um, all right. So how do you spot warrants when you're reading the articles in the composing gender book, or maybe when you're editing your own paper? Okay. Well, there are a few things to look for. All right. Um, we have authoritative warrants. When you're analyzing uh, your advertisements, uh, the authoritative warrant would come up in maybe two places. The first place would be, is the, uh, the evidence that you're choosing, um, is the advertisement you're choosing a real advertisement? Okay, I have had students when doing this paper include fake advertisements. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, if they realized it was a fake advertisement or not. Maybe they felt some kind of pressure um, and they didn't have time to double check it. Um, I would prefer that if you're uh, in doubt uh, that you contact me, okay, rather than include something that, that looks to be fake. Um, I think the, probably the safest thing to do is to make sure that the official logo, the trademarks of the company uh, are included. Right. Oftentimes going to the company's website, um, doing a little research can kind of help. If you notice the, um, the Old Spice advertisement that I posted to our homepage, it has the Old Spice logo uh, on it. it. It's the official uh, Old Spice uh, YouTube channel. Um, and there have been articles actually written 
about that advertisement because it was so popular and um, entertaining and, and possibly uh, even, um, I won't say controversial, but I'll say thought provoking, provocative when it first came out. Uh, so there, there were plenty of other sources that I could look to to then cross check uh, whether that was credible or not. In addition to my own personal experience having seen that commercial in different places at that time in my life. So authoritative warrants refer to the credibility of the source that you are using. If it's a primary source like an advertisement, make sure it's a real ad. Okay. Um, if, if it's not a real advertisement, I'm going to have trouble accepting your claim uh, because the basis for your claim is shaky, uh, or I should say the, the means of supporting that claim is shaky. The other thing is the secondary source that you might bring in to help improve your analysis of the advertisement. Well, if you stick to Steve Craig's article or Gail Dines, then we don't have to worry about that, right? The, the authoritative warrant has been granted um, and you don't need to do much to set up the authority of those sources because they come from our class. They come from um, a published uh, anthology composing gender. In the case of Steve Craig's, it comes from another one called Signs of Life. And I will post, I'm gonna make a note of that right now, I will post the Steve Craig citation because that does not come from the Composing Gender book. So I wanna make sure you all have access to that when you are writing your final drafts. You don't need your work cited for a rough draft, but I want you to all have it for the final draft. Um, you will need it, right? When you're creating your own work cited. Okay, so authoritative warrants are, well, how do we know we can trust the evidence that you're using? How do we know we can trust what this source is saying. If you were to choose a secondary source from outside of our book, um, you would need to set it up a little bit. You would, in the context for your support sandwich, you'd need to say, why should we believe what this person has to say? What reputation, what authority do they have, okay? The other two warrants that you can look for are substantive warrants. Um, I kind of blurred the lines here with the, uh, the evidence, okay? Um, uh, a little bit, but with the substantive warrant, we, we ask ourselves those questions related to the STAR principle. Um, did you provide enough evidence to support your claim? Uh, the evidence that you did find, is that evidence typical? Is it representative of all kinds of this advertisement or is it atypical, okay? So those are some key questions you wanna ask yourself. And Maybe if it's if you've chosen an ad that's kind of atypical, then you would want to explain why you think it is relevant, okay? Because that connection might be doubted, okay? And then uh, the support for your claim might be doubted. All right, and then we finally have the motivational warrant. This is where the writer assumes that the audience uh, shares their values and their beliefs, okay? Um, it, uh, it will uh, depend on a context, uh, a case-by-case -case situation, okay? Um, I will look for good examples of these things. Um, and especially, and if you find good examples of these things in the readings, please share them with me, okay? Um, I'm always on the hunt for good examples, but I want you as you are doing your reading and your writing to keep in mind, what assumptions are you making? Um, what assumptions about the credibility of the sources that you are using? Uh, what assumptions about the quality of the evidence that is being presented, and what assumptions about the needs and values that are being presented, okay, um, uh, are being made. Okay, so that's enough uh, related to the warrants. The other thing I wanted to draw your attention to before we close out is this example of a body paragraph for an ad, an ad analysis essay. Um, I do think this is a very good example uh, for a lot of reasons. The person, the student chose a legitimate advertisement and you notice here they included the illustration as you are required to do that. So make sure that you are including the illustration. Um, you can see that they followed MLA format to include the caption underneath the illustration and that they put this above their body paragraph. It is your choice whether you wanna put the illustration above your body paragraph or below it. 
Um, but that is a, a new MLA element that you are, um, I guess, applying in this essay, all right? Um, Stella, you're asking a question. Let me see what it says here. How many il illustrations are allowed? That's a good question. Um, as Well, when you say allowed, uh, I would say you probably shouldn't have more than four, one for each of the advertisements, okay? Let's see what I say in the prompt is the minimum. I think I'm requiring, let's see, select four contemporary advertisements for each advertisement, include illustrations for each. Okay, so the requirement then is for you to have four illustrations, okay? One for each advertisement that you are looking up, okay? Now, some of you will be looking up advertisements that are videos. Some of you will be looking up advertisements that are uh, photos or still shots like the one presented here in this example. If you are using a still shot or a photo like this, it's pretty simple, right? You know exactly what image needs to be included. If you're using a video, uh, choose the frame from the video that you are going to be analyzing, uh, at least one of the frames that you're gonna be analyzing in your, um, your body paragraph, okay? Um, it should be connected, right? The, what you are analyzing with the illustration that you have included. Stella, thank you. That's an excellent question. All right. So what you'll notice here in this example, after the MLA formatting of the illustration, is that this student begins with a very solid uh, topic sentence claim. The paramount aspiration of a heterosexual woman is to secure a life-lasting relationship with a man by achieving his love and affection. All right, it is debatable and it is significant, but is it specific? Well, to a degree. It's specific in language, heterosexual woman. That's very precise, okay, uh, in terms of the subject matter. Achieving love and affection, that's kind of, that, that, that's okay. That, that's, understandable enough um, on the abstraction ladder, uh, whereas heterosexual woman is like levels one or two, love and affection are more like levels three or four, okay? If they were to say, uh, let's see, did they say the word romance in here or, or eros or uh, an, an erotic form of love? No, and when we say affection, we probably mean emotions like implied in there. Love could be a little bit more specific. I think affection helps us understand the kind of love that's being described here. But here's what makes this claim better. The following sentence right after it. In its romance is on ad. Revlon stimulates its female consumer's desire to be loved and accepted by men. All right, so these two ideas connect. This is the more specific claim, okay? Uh, because it is identifying what the particular advertisement is doing, okay? What we have here, this paramount aspiration of a heterosexual woman, that's actually a warrant, okay? The student is identifying a gender norm um, and I, that I'm sure the student has, has taken from uh, Judith Lorber or Pepper Schwartz and has included that in here, right? I recommend that you uh, begin your topic sentence claims with the advertisement, start there, okay? Um, and the person could have even combined these two into one clear topic sentence claim as opposed to um, spreading it out across two different ones, okay? Uh, so this is probably a good example of warrant language. It's a little bit broader. It's not applied to a specific commercial. Don't begin your topic sentences, uh, don't begin your paragraphs with warrants, okay? Begin them with debatable specific claims, okay? Can you guys see the difference between those two sentences, how this one is more specific because it names the subject and this one has a much broader subject, right? Um, let's see, all of heterosexual women as opposed to the construction of heterosexual femininity that's presented in the romance ad by Revlon, okay? Those are two different things. So aim for specificity in your topic sentence claims. This kind of a warrant should be included in the analysis, okay? Um, not the worst offense in the world, uh, but it's, um, it's, uh, the organization could be adjusted a little bit. Then what you'll notice here is that the uh, student uses objective description to describe the ad. I thought they did that very effectively. 
Um, they not only referred to visual details, but they also included copy, right? That's the language that I mentioned is included on the advertisement. If you look up at the top, you can see that quote that the writer is referring to. Um, and then the, uh, the other bit of evidence that the student includes here is a quote from Steve Craig's article that helped this student do the analysis of the advertisement, okay? So uh, this is, I think, a very good example of a body paragraph to follow for this particular assignment, okay? Um, it's got a lot of different elements that I'm looking for, certainly makes a claim, and it backs it up with reason and with evidence. Um, and it, while, the, while that warrant is out of place, um, other ones were acceptable that uh, I could understand and think that this was a coherent bit of analysis, okay? Um, any questions about this model here? All right. Actually, Professor, I, I do have a question about something like when you're like citing the ad as evidence. Um, yes, sure. If uh, videos are okay, right? To if we um, to cite instead of like the of ad course. posters. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, okay. definitely. That's why, like on the home page for this week, I put that Old Spice ad up there as like an example, right? It's a mm -hmm. it, it's a video. It's a video advertisement. Those are those are perfectly fine, right? And the source of that video advertisement um, can 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 be uh, from a range of places, right? Like that one I saw on TV, and then I went and I found it, you know, online, right? And obviously, I saw it a long time ago on TV. Um, so some advertisements you might see on TV. Other advertisements might be like pop-ups or flash ads, right? Those things are still advertisements too. Okay, just depends on the particular product that you are uh, that you're looking at. Thank you. Okay, good. Excellent. Uh, other questions? Okay, well, uh, with that, we will conclude our little uh, review session. If you do have any other questions, feel free to email me. If you would like to set up a meeting, we can do that too. Okay, otherwise, uh, our, our rough draft is due on Tuesday of week nine. And I say do, I mean best buy, right? I encourage you submit your rough drafts before midnight Tuesday. That way you can participate in the peer review and get feedback from your classmates. Um, and I can also take a quick look at the rough drafts that you have uh, created. Okay. Um, that's all for now. Thank you for your time. And uh, I will catch up with you in the future. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care, Professor.